This podcast replay is brought to you by Moody's Dental, the implant and Invisalign experts. Take advantage of your insurance benefits for 2019 before the year runs out and they're all gone. Call 305-821-0231. Visit MoodySDental.com. All right, we got uh, Michelle now. Michelle was saying three's a charm. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Michelle, are you there? I am. I'm here. Sorry there we about go. That. All um, good. All good. So anyways, I was a food. Yeah, you were food, asking food, about food. Food, yes. food and, like our holiday food? Yes, of course. Okay, holiday food was good on, on uh, Christmas Eve. We did, well, first, the first night we got back, on, uh, we went on a little cruise to the Bahamas. We got back on Monday. So Monday night I did a Hanukkah dinner. Uh, and so we had um, potato latkes and stuff, which nice. was nice. And then uh, for Christmas Eve, we did a meatball bake, like an Italian dinner, which was yummy. Then for Christmas morning, Dave's tradition is that he makes pancakes, uh, plain and blueberry pancakes and bacon. Excellent. And, um, and yeah, that was wow. our food. So the good news is we got a Peloton as our gift to each other. We invest, invested in a Peloton, so all of this food that we've been eating we plan to burn off on the Peloton. Oh, so th- it's not an insult in your family? Like some people were insulted by the guy that bought a Peloton for his wife? And it's like, give me a break. <laughs> people got all bent out of shit. Did you oh, see that God. whole thing? People, that- I know, I know, I know. Someone put, I wrote something on my Facebook that we got a Peloton and someone wrote, oh, I'm surprised you got a, you know, weren't you offended by the ad? I'm just, I'm so tired of everyone being offended by everything. I'm yeah. sorry, but. Yes. This generation, I don't know what the hell, but everyone is offended by everything. And everyone just wants to live their days and nights angry. Right. Everyone has to be angry and offended at somebody and upset about something. And I'm sorry, life is too short, you know? No, it's just... I'm offended. If there's something that's truly offensive, if someone says something against Jewish people or against Hispanic people or anything black you know i can be offended but i'm not offended by every little thing that's, uh, that's just stupid absurd. you can't live that way i cannot live that way no, no. i'm with you i was we, my wife and i were talking <laughs> about this that, that like we grew up with like our parents and grandparents would like say things to you to shut you up or get the hell out of here or whatever and and it was just something in a in a moment of they were pissed or whatever you know and they'll tell you something in spanish or english and you as a kid would just, you know, you'd like, okay, whatever. You'd walk away, and then, you know, everything's back to normal. These Generation Z and, and, uh, uh, and uh, what's it called, these millennials, they could never handle our grandparents or parents <laughs> who were no. just like, you know, Archie Bunker-like <laughs> in a way. You know, they, they had the little George Jefferson in them. But you knew that whatever they were insulting you at the moment or telling you to shut the hell up, it meant nothing five minutes later. I mean, and you kind of right. knew it. But these kids, it sticks to them like luggage. Like they don't forget right. about it. Like they think it's something personal. They they take everything literal. You know, everyone, I just think that they want to have a cause. You know, everybody, I thought to me it all really stems from social media. It's a whole other conversation. But I really think that social media and the internet, I mean, you know, there's a lot of good things about the internet. We have a lot of information available to us that we didn't have before, and we can connect with people in other parts of the world. And there's a lot of wonderful things about it. But also, it creates a situation where everyone has a platform. Everybody is now has their own private TV show and their own private radio show, their own private newspaper that they can sit there and spew whatever they want to spew, and they find other people that are just like them. And then everyone wants a cause. They have to be offended by this, that, or the other. And then they, you know, call out everybody who doesn't agree with them. And then the other people who are on their team are like, yeah, 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 you know. And it just it creates so much division. I mean, I really feel like what's happening politically in our country, just everything. There's just so much divisiveness and so much hatred. And nobody talks to anybody who's not like them. You know, our friends who are lefty Democrats don't talk to our friends who are Republicans. And I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's just, I just, I can't, I'm a happy person. I'm an optimistic person and I'm going to choose my battles about what to be offended about. And I'm definitely not offended by a Peloton ad. I went out and bought a freaking Peloton 
And I love it. It's fun. I did a 30 minute disco night yesterday with Cody, playing a training moon, hallelujah, and Casey and the Sunshine Band. And everyone can just kiss my jubin butt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Michelle Kaufman, follow her on Twitter at Kauf Sports. All right, Michelle, so we're getting closer and closer to the end of the year. Are we, we closer are. and closer to getting our damn coach? Right. Well, I do speak because I knew this question was going to come up since it's been coming up for about four months now every Wednesday. Um, I actually reached out to Jorge Mas just a few minutes ago and I said, uh, listen, uh, when can I be expecting news on this? You know, it's the holidays. I have family in town. I want to be able to plan my days off. Um, and his answer to me was, I will give you an update mañana. So I will give an update mañana. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, I, in my mind, they already have, I mean, he said it himself at the Soccer X conference. We already have our coach selected. Those were the exact words. We already have our coach selected. We're working on his contract, blah, blah, blah. So in my mind, it's either uh, Marcelo Gallardo that we've been saying over and over from River Plate or Patrick Vieira from Nice. Those are the t- if it's not one of those two, I'll be very surprised. Let me put it that way. It's possible that maybe they were negotiating with those two and it fell through and they've gone to a plan C or something. But in my mind, it's one of those people, the person has already been selected, they've already been in contract talks and probably even possibly, you know, are in daily talks about personnel and the next designated players and blah, blah, blah. Even though something has not been announced to the public doesn't mean that things aren't going on behind the scenes. But yes, they need to hire coach soon because the training camp starts uh, I believe it's January 18th, 18th or 19th of January, which is four weeks away. So four weeks away from right now, this team is going to have a practice. They're going to have their first training session. And you would think that they would have a coach in time for the first training session. Okay. That, that would be, uh, that would be <laughs> fantastic. They do point out to me, they do point out to me when I keep acting like it's crazy that they don't have a coach. They do keep pointing out to me that, there are a couple other teams in MLS right now that fired their coaches at the end of the season, and those teams also don't have coaches yet. And so there is no coach, there is no team to coach at this very moment. On December 26th, there's no practice. There's no team to coach. There's no practices. There are no games until February. So you know they don't they don't seem like there is they're not they don't seem to be panicking as much as the fans seem to be panicking. But I do think that, you know, by December 31st, they should have a coach. I mean, I just think it would be crazy if they don't. Right. And and uh, the international players, is there another deadline? Is that the same kind of deadline? Or <laughs> or is that well, something they, that because of their contracts, it might be affecting it or transfers or whatever it is? Right. Well, the thing with that is that the, uh, the European transfer window is um, – is January 1st, starts January 1st, New Year's. So, you know, once that transfer window opens, that's when all those deals are, are going to be made for the players that are in Europe. So my guess is that January 1st, when the transfer window opens in Europe, that is when we are going to hear, uh, you know, the actual formal announcements. That doesn't mean, again, that they're not talking to players, already working on contracts, talking to the agents. But, um, you know, but I do think, Oop. I do think that that's coming soon, but that the announcement of that could be, could be after January 1st. That is possible. One of our, one of our viewers says, speaking of soccer, will inter Miami show respect to those who grew up supporting the game through the strikers fusion and strikers again? I, I'm not sure what that question means, but I think they are going to do some kind of a, uh, a type of a Hall of Fame type thing, right? Isn't that planned down the line or something like that? Oh, at the stadium up there? Some yeah. sort of a, a tribute to yeah. the of the past? Yeah. They had mentioned that. They had mentioned something about a tribute uh, at that stadium since there's so much history at that venue that um, that they would do some sort of tribute Hall of Fame or tribute to 
the the original strikers, obviously, and then the fusion, and then whatever teams, you know, the new strikers part two that came along. Um, so yeah, I would think that there will be some uh, commemoration of you know of the soccer history that went on at that stadium. Yeah. By the way, I don't know if you knew because it was it, it was very bad timing, but <clears throat> on the night of the twenty third, when everybody was getting ready for the holidays, they did sign two more players including a Haitian player, <clears throat> which will be of interest to our Haitian community and to everybody, but I mean in particular to our Haitian community. Uh, they signed a young defender, 21 years old, named Denso Ulysses, and he is a Haitian uh, from the Haitian under-23 national team. So he's playing in the Gold Cup qualifiers and Olympic qualifiers and stuff for the under-23 Haitian team. He's been with the Sounders, organization in their USL team in Tacoma as a young uh rising young talent he's a right back supposed to be really fast and really good and obviously would be thrilled to be playing in Miami as opposed to Tacoma Washington because he is a Haitian national so that's one player Denso Ulysses that they just signed on the 23rd <clears throat> excuse me and they signed another backup goalkeeper Drake Callender, who's been playing at Cal Berkeley, and he was a homegrown player with the San Jose Earthquakes. So he came up through San Jose Academy, was signed by the Earthquakes, uh, played at Cal Berkeley. He's 22, and uh, they got him as well. So that brings the total. I believe they have 20 players total on the roster right now with the two DPs still to come will be 22. And then the college draft is coming up on January 9th. Um, so they'll fill out their roster, you know, by January 10th, they'll have their full roster. Now, I would imagine that the, the, the draft kids, they'll, we'll probably be watching them on the USL team, right? That's, that's probably, well, I, I mean, they are the first and third picks of the entire draft. Maybe they're really good and they can be on the MLS team, but I almost feel like those are two dudes that are probably headed for the USL. I don't know. It seems like the, it seems to me that they are going to have a completely different roster for the USL team. It's not that their USL players are going to come from this pool. You know, I think the 30 players that are signed for this team are going to be for this team. They're going to be the team, the team that's going to be practicing with this team. They're going to be the reserves for the, for the first team. I think the USL team is going to be a, a whole separate roster because it's a USL second division USL team. So it's not one step down from the, Major league soccer yeah. team, it's two steps down. So um, I think my understanding, anyway, it's possible that maybe players number 28, 29, and 30, you know, will be moved to the USL. Oh, my, my, my to the Miami FC? Miami FC will... Uh... No, 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 not Miami okay. FC, to the, right. to the, to the uh, Inter-Miami USL second team. Uh, my understanding is the players that they're drafting are all for Major League Soccer. Okay. And USL is going to have a whole separate lineup. Oh, oh, okay. So, th wait a minute. So, the college draft will not feed the USL team? It has to, right? The later part of the draft or something? Well, yeah, later. Yeah, it could later in the draft. Okay. But the first, I think the first pick and the third pick that they're getting in the college draft, right. I think both of those would be players that would be thought of for the Major League Soccer team. Okay. All right. Good stuff there. Uh, nothing new on practice, right? We don't know where they're going to practice yet. That has not we been We do announced. not know where they're going to practice. It's not going to be there. It's not going to be at the Lockhart site. That is not going to be ready quite yet. So, you know, I was hearing that they could be on a couple of college campuses in South Florida for a bit, although UM, it was not working out at UM. That was their first choice. And then I believe they're going to go somewhere. I believe they're going to go somewhere in Central Florida. And train with other with another MLS team, probably either in Orlando or at, at IMG Academy. Okay. Um, over in Bradenton, they have a very nice facility, and they can train over there and play some practice games. And then, I would not be surprised if they leave Florida altogether to another state or even possibly another country. Wow. Okay. Well, then they're they're willing to spend money. That's for sure. That's what you got to oh, love. They're spend money. They're yeah. spending money. Yeah. This team is spending money. But I think honestly, I've been impressed with everything so far. One thing that I think was a big boo boo is they should have come out with their jersey before Christmas. 
because True. so many people yes. have been asking me, including members of my own family and friends, they wanted to buy that as Hanukkah and Christmas gift to buy the kit, to buy the shirt, to buy, sure. and sure. it's not available. If you can buy the merchandise. There is Inter Miami merchandise out there, which I did get some for my relatives and stuff. Caneswear, Caneswear, Caneswear. Caneswear, go to Caneswear and get your Inter Miami stuff. But the jersey is not coming out, I don't believe, until after January 1st, which I think is a big miss on their part, a whiff. I mean, I just think that they could have made so much money before Christmas. After the first week of January... I mean, yeah, the true diehard fans are going to buy, but everyone has already spent all their money I only have over one, the holidays. I only have one question. Is this out of their control? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe whoever it is, Adidas, Nike, I'm not even sure who's in charge of the jerseys. Is that is that their call? Was that not Miami's call? Or did Miami have some power in this? If they yeah, did, so. if they I, did I think- then they got to do what you said, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's out of their control. I do think, I think it's Adidas, and I think it's out of their control. That makes sense. Uh, you know, because to me, the timing is just weird. It's like, you've got Christmas, Hanukkah, you've got all the holidays, everybody, you've got a new team. It, you know, people do not own the merchandise. Nobody has the jersey yet on the entire planet. Your team is starting to train in one month right after the holidays. Why wouldn't you put the, those shirts on sale from from? Thanksgiving, you know, they should have done a big launch on Thanksgiving and you have one month to get your jerseys before the season starts. I mean, it just seemed to me to make perfect sense, but, you know, I don't know everything going on behind the scenes. There is a reason why it hasn't come out yet, but it's a shame, I should say. I should say it's a shame that they didn't come out earlier because I think they would have sold a lot more. Follow her on Twitter at Cough Sports. More importantly, catch her exceptional work at the Miami Herald website. She is Michelle Kaufman. Michelle, as always, thank you for taking some time here during the holidays. We really appreciate right. it. And next week, we should be talking coach. Next week, it's going to be, Jen, it's going to be what, the 31st Wednesday or is it already January 1st, next Wednesday? Uh, next Wednesday, I think, is the first already. The first. Okay, yep. so I, I, I would like to think but I've said this before, it sounds silly, but I would like to think that we will have a coach to talk about by next Wednesday. Well, Wednesday's the first, so let's hope uh, it happens. As always, yes. Michelle, thank you for taking some time. Enjoy that Independence Bowl on the Peloton. Oh, uh, yes. All right. Take care. <laughs> you got it. Be good. There you go. The great Michelle Kaufman. We love it. And she's on the Peloton watching. She says that today she's watching the entire Independence Bowl on the Peloton.